Hi guys, welcome to the video on the second exercise, the intermediate sketching. So I'm just going to walk through this exercise and you can kind of see how I go through it. Um, so this is the intermediate sketching. So the steps are listed down below here. Our first step is going to be create a new document, um, set our workspace units to millimeters, and then we're going to begin a sketch on the front plane. So I'm going to go to my documents. Uh, I'm going to create um, a document, I call it intermediate sketching. And then once that comes up, I'll go ahead and set the workspace units to millimeters, go to the front plane, and I will create a new sketch. On the front plane, I'm going to go ahead and switch my view so I'm looking at the front plane and I'm going to type P to close those uh, orthogonal planes. So now I just see the front plane, the sketch one. All right, and we're on to the next step. So the second step says to create a vertical construction line. Um, we want the bottom uh, to be on the origin. And then we're going to draw a couple of other um, vertical or horizontal lines coming off of that. So I'll switch back to my sketch here. I'm going to turn on um, the construction line and start the line command here at the origin. I want to make sure that I'm on top of that. Draw that vertically. Let's click that. Turn off the construction line. And then start a new line here, about here, and about like that. And I'll hit escape to stop the line command. And let's check and see how we get there. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to show constraints here to see that I can um, see the horizontal and vertical constraints there. And I've got some perpendicular constraints in there as well. OK, our next step, we want to create uh, an arc. And so we're going to start the arc here down at this. Um, we're going to pick this point. It says to be sure the bottom of the arc is coincident on the endpoint, and the top endpoint should not be vertical. So we don't want these two points to line up. So subtract my drawing, go to the arc. And then you see there's some different um, options here for doing this. I'm going to use the three point arc. And so my first point's going to be on here. My second point's going to be up here somewhere. Um, I just don't want it to be lined up with that. Okay, so I'll put it over to this side a little bit, and then I'll kind of uh, push it so that it's going in the right direction. Okay, and so it's okay to that. And looks like we'll get there on to the next step. And so now we're going to mirror all of that, um, those three pieces around that uh, construction line that we created in the middle. So, uh, So I'm going to start uh, the mirror command here, uh, select the mirror line, I'm going to select this line, and the objects to the mirror are this one, this one, and this one. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn off that mirror command. Okay. The next step. Um, so I want this another arc across the top here. I want it to be tangent here and tangent here. So it gives you some um, advice over here by selecting the tangent arc tool from the sketch toolbar. So if we go over here to the toolbar, here I'm going to choose tangent arc here. And I want it to be tangent here. And I want it to be tangent here. And there's my arc. Okay. Now, again, you notice that my sketch doesn't look exactly like the one here. But as we start adding dimensions, we should see that uh, get closer together. Okay, I want to make sure I have a coincident constraint between the center of the circle and the end of that arc. So let's go back here and make sure you can see that I don't, I have a center and I have the end of the, the line, but they're not necessarily coincident. So I'm going to come up here to my, um, to my constraints. I'm going to choose coincident. I'm going to make sure that this one and this one are on the same point. Okay, next step, I'm going to add some dimensions. So we've got a 
radius of 125 on the side arc, a radius of 75 on the top arc, a distance of 200 there along that vertical, and then 50 and 125. Now, as I create this dimension, we're going to be careful on how we pick that, um, but I'll, see, I'll show you that once we get in there. So let's start with the arcs. We'll start with the radius of 125. So the dimensions. Let's zoom out a little bit. This dimension. This is supposed to be 125. So you see how big that makes my geometry. Let's zoom out here to show that. And then a uh, dimension of 75 on the top arc. So it's going to be 75 here. And then 250 and 125. So that's it's going to select this line. And that's going to be 200. And we'll select this line, make that 50. And now when I go to dimension the bottom part of this, um, if I try to select this line, it's only going to dimension half of that. So instead of picking the line, I'm going to pick the point. So I'm going to pick this point and this point, and that should be 150. So I'm going to turn off the constraints here, just so it's a little easier to see. And hopefully my sketch is looking pretty close to what they have there on the screen. Okay, if you want to play around with some of these, we can move those around a little bit. All right, next step, um, we want to offset that arc. So we're going to offset that. We're going to make basically a parallel copy is what offset means. And so we're going to make that 40 millimeters away from that outside arc. And so I'll use the offset command here. Um, this is right here. So offset. I'm going to click on that. And it's showing me, you know, where that arc is going. And so, um, and it's doing a whole profile there. And so I don't want it to do that. I just want it to do the single arc. So I'm going to make sure to click that. I just get that one arc. Let's try this again. Offset. This arc. I went this direction. Okay. If I click on that arrow, I can change the side that it's offset it to. I want it to offset it to the inside. So we'll go ahead and do that. And I want that distance to be 40 inside that arc. Turn off the offset command. Okay, so it looks like we're good there. Next step, um, we're going to sketch a vertical line uh, right there, just somewhere kind of around there. And so we need a line, and we're just going to pick somewhere close here, and just make sure that we draw it straight up and down, that will assign that vertical constraint automatically. If we don't get it um, vertical, we can always apply that vertical constraint separately. So if I Let's come back in here and place a line. And if I did not make it vertical, um, I could always come back and apply that vertical constraint to that line there. Straighten that out. Okay, I want another tangent arc in between the line and the other arc. So tangent arc, it's already selected there. Here and here. And then we're going to go ahead and um, mirror that. And then when we mirror that, that, those constraints won't automatically apply there. So we just want to make sure that we check this and make sure that they apply there. So we want to mirror this, select our mirror line, this line, and this line. And then we just want to check those constraints there to make sure that this is um, coincident and tangent on both of those. So we want it coincident here and here, and we want tangent between here and here, and we want a tangent between here and here. Okay, so you see those tangents uh, pop up on there, and then it looks like we missed that coincident. You can see there's a little gap right there, so we want to make sure that this and this are coincident. Turn off my constraints so I can see a little better here. Back lesson. And our next step is we want to create that tangent arc around the bottom of that. 
So we just create a new team to work. Page of gear and gear is set up for us. Okay, and then I think we'll go through. Uh, uh, it looks like we want to add, I think this is going to be a slot here, but we're going to create that as a, um, as a center point rectangle. Okay, and sitting right on that center um, construction line. So I go to my rectangles. You see the default one is a corner rectangle. We want to change that. It's the center point rectangle. And so I want it to be on this line somewhere. So just click a point, make sure it's on that line. And then we'll just kind of place that. We'll adjust the dimensions later if we need to. Okay, next step. So now we'll go ahead and apply our dimensions. So we have a dimension of 25 off the bottom. That rectangle is a height of 20 and a width of 80. And so we we'll place our dimensions here to here. And I think that's 25. And we want the height of this box here to be 20. And we want the width of this to be 80. Okay. Again, I can adjust those dimension locations if I want to. Text a little more readable. Not totally important, but uh, this just helps us read that a little bit. Okay, and then we've got to apply our dimensions to the arc here. So we've got a dimension of 100 between the two centers, a radius of 40, and a radius of 50. So let's start with this dimension here between the two center points. And Leave that set 140, or sorry, that was 100. Let's change that. Let's click on it. Double click on it. 100. There we go. That's better. And then a radius of 40 and a radius of 15. So let's do it here. Let's do a radius of 40 and a radius of 15. That's pretty good. Okay. And then I think we're all done with this sketch. And so we can go ahead and complete that sketch. And we can see the sketch uh, drawn there. And then I think they're going to ask us about this area right in here. So on the very last step, we'll just check that area there. And so if we look at this area down here, so it tells us what that area is. And we can use that to check against our drawing. Okay, so that uh, completes that um, tutorial. I uh, hope you found it uh, useful. And uh, again, check in with me um, on Google Classroom, or you can send me um, questions through the Remind app or email. Thanks a lot.